Okay, so here's what we're making today. A very sleek looking landing page dashboard setup that your players will log into every time that they go into your Foundry server. I'm gonna cover things like creating the world, which is pretty basic, as well as all of the more cool things, like if you click on this region map, your map pick pops up, or you click on a character's image and their character sheet comes up. I also have added some lighting effects and things like that, and Honestly, this is probably not everything you can do for a, a dashboard like this. And it's probably not all that I'm going to do with this dashboard, but this will give you a very nice starting point. I think once I teach you the basics of setting some of this stuff up, you're gonna find way cooler ways to make this your own. So without further ado, let's dive in. First thing is first, you need to install your modules. So the modules that you definitely 100% need, Monk's active tile triggers, party inventory, simple calendar, and maybe lock view, but I don't know if lock view is going to work yet as I haven't had my players log in and test it out for me. You're gonna see my foundry is a little messed up. I had some trouble with my home server so I made a new server and I haven't gotten all that set up yet. So it looks like I have no worlds. I have worlds. I just haven't pulled them from the other server and put them onto this. server. <laughs> you're going to go in, you're going to go ahead and create your world. So this is the world that we're going to be going into. Um, but to create your world, you're going to need to do several things. You also need to download your game system. So I'm using 5e. You can see I also have a Pathfinder one on here. I have a Call of Cthulhu one <laughs> on here. On D and D 5e, most likely. So you just hit install package, and you can literally just search for dungeon. Actually, I think it's just D and D, D and D, and then yeah, it'll come up 5e. You can see I've already installed it, but you'll hit that button. You can also paste the link to it uh, if you're looking it up online comes to add on modules you're going to do the same thing install module you can type in monks and it'll pop up um i'll also put the links to all of these modules in the description so you can copy this github link paste it into the manifest url down at the bottom and hit install and then you don't have to look it up then you're going to create a world so you're going to hit create world you're going to change the title this is just a test um this will also name the world folder for you. You're going to choose your game system. Remember we had to pick this and then your background image is whatever you want it to be. I picked the map of the world. You could do something as easy as going to a stock photo place and pulling wood off of the stock photo database. I actually picked the minimal theme because I didn't want to have the world description showing because knowing me, I'd put something in there, then they'd read it every time and they'd be like, why is this not come up yet? And I just wanted to avoid that. And then I did pick the session, which is like 12, 17, 20, 23, which is our uh, session zero and the time. Then you hit create world. I'm not gonna do that because I already have the world. Then you'll log in. It'll look like this. You will not have any extra people quite yet, um, but you will be able to log in as a game master and you probably won't have a password. You'll actually have a different dashboard, which will have the Foundry logo and all of this cool mumbo jumbo. We don't really care about that. You want this. <laughs> First thing that I would recommend doing is finding a background image that you want to work with. This one that I have is the one that I drew myself. And looking up how to, um, like just examples in particular of what people do with their dashboards and landing pages, I found that most people use the same freaking image. <laughs> That's fine, do what you want. Um, I don't think it matters as long as you're not claiming it as your own. Uh, I've seen people like Photoshop certain things and whatever. I drew this. So if you take this, at least credit me. <laughs> We're going to need to create the user since this is a new world. So what you're going to do is you're gonna hit this gear icon up in the top right. You're gonna go down to user management. It'll take you back to this login screen. And then this is where you're going to create the users. You're gonna ha click this create additional user button. You'll add their name and um, a password. I just put them all as players. And then the other thing 
we don't need that. The other thing I do is I configure the permissions. These people that I'm going to have in this group, I trust pretty much explicitly, I explicitly, implicitly, whatever. I trust them a lot. <laughs> We're not really using this. This is like a, this is more of an in-person game rather than a stream. Most likely this is just gonna be like a database for their character information, world information, that kind of thing. If they wanna store their character sheet in a digital fashion, it's more for me to keep track of everything that I've been writing down in my notes, but as well as maps and that kind of stuff because I am gonna have a monitor where I display the maps for the group. So I gave them pretty much all permissions. You do you but you wanna set that all up at the same time. You're gonna hit save. Next, we wanna turn on our modules. So again, gear icon, you're gonna hit ma manage modules. I have all of the ones I have here <laughs> turned on, but you need lock view, monks active tile tokens, simple calendar, party inventory. You're gonna hit save. Now we need to create actors. So what you're gonna do is create, um, you know, whatever character. I actually have a fourth character that I'm gonna need. Her name is Sky. Uh, she's not a player character. She's technically an NPC. I'm gonna go ahead and create her. That's all you need to do. If you don't have your player's character information, like I do, I don't have my one player's party information at all. I, and for the other two, I literally just have their pictures because we're going to be creating characters at session zero. So I'm not really concerned about having all of that information right now. Regardless, you can still assign these tokens to those players without having any of their information. So I have this one here. You're gonna right click on it in the list. A drop down menu pops up. You're gonna hit configure ownership and then you're going to make that person be the owner and then everybody else have none. Um, I did that for all of these and I also added pictures to anybody who had pictures. That's the basic stuff. <sighs> now to actually make the landing page cool. I'm just gonna recreate the scene. I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna call it dash video. So I know what the difference is. Here are the settings you want. You want to change this. It definitely needs to show in navigation, but you want it to show for all your players. You don't need a navigation name because the navigation name, if you leave this blank, is gonna be dash video or whatever you put here. Background image, this is where you want your, whatever image you've worked on. You're gonna click here. You're gonna upload it to this as the background. So here's mine. Bam, you don't need a foreground image. We're gonna pick all this other stuff later, but we don't need a grid. So we're gonna go over to the grid tab. We're gonna hit grid list. I actually turned down the padding. You really don't need any padding. We're gonna go to lighting. This is important. You don't want token vision or fog exploration on. If you have that, then you have to put tokens on the screen and then have vision set on their tokens. And then, no, you just, that's not what we're doing. This isn't a map. Global illumination, I also turn on because you want the whole thing to be lit up. Ambiance, um, this is totally up to you. I don't have any sounds or anything yet. I was thinking about maybe adding like the crackling of a fire or some BS, but for now, I got nothing. Lock view. So here's what you're gonna do. You want to limit the zoom and the pan in the box. That, that padding, remember, I decreased. You want it to stay in that box. That way they're not moving around. You want to exclude the sidebar and blacken the sidebar. This just keeps it like in the middle. That way when it auto scales it or moves it into the middle or you move around, you, you can still see things. I'm gonna hit save. Another thing's gonna pop up. You're gonna see it at the top left. We're gonna click on it and here's what we see, right? We're going to right click on it and we're gonna configure it again. And here's why. We're actually going to change this gray, ugly background color into a color that will um, match the actual background, kind of blend it in better. So you're gonna click on this right next to the hex code of your background color, and you're gonna click this eyedropper tool. I'm gonna click this dark blue, and then I'm also going to capture the current view. So this is how it opens for the first time at least. 
I don't know that this always works and that is why we are hoping that Lockview will do that. Now is the fun stuff. You got the basics set up, right? Let's make clickable things. So let's start with this map. As you can see, my image already has the map embedded into it. However, it's not clickable. You can't do crap. We're going to go to, if you look at the top left, go to tile controls. You're going to click this little cube looking icon. This is where you're going to be able to drag a square onto this section. Now, here's the other tricky part. You need a transparent PNG. I will drop a link somewhere in case you don't have the capability of making your own, but you're going to click this little button. I got to make the tile image a transparent PNG. That means that there won't be anything on screen. They can just, it'll just be the map that's already there. Okay. The rest of this doesn't matter. The overhead stuff doesn't matter. Animation doesn't matter. What you need is the triggers tab. Make sure it's active, right? Checkbox in the active, all tokens allowed controlled by anyone, get rid of enter, and instead change the triggering moment to click. That means when they click on it, the thing will happen, okay? You wanna allow this when paused, sure, they can look at the map whenever it's paused. Trigger using the image instead of a border, that's fine. And then a hover over point, which means when your, your cursor hovers or moves over this rectangle, that it will change, which helps indicate that there is something to click on, okay? We're gonna do some other things to help with that too for the user experience. You do not need sight on this to trigger it, so unclick that. And the chance to trigger should always be at 100%, but just make sure that it is. Next, we're gonna go to the sub tab of actions. Here, you're gonna see nothing, but you're gonna click this add button. What we want to action hap bleh. what we want to happen is the action so when someone clicks on this what do we want it to do well we want this to show an image so to do that we're going to go down here and you're going to see show image click on that then we're going to find the image which of course my all of my things are already a mess and there's only like three folders and then you could add a caption, it doesn't matter. But for the four, you want it to be just the triggering player because it would be annoying if you clicked on the map and somebody else had to see the map every time. So triggering player only, we're gonna hit update. That should be good. We should hit create tile, it's done. So if you move your cursor over it, you see right here is the line. That's not really enough to show what's here, right? So the other thing I like to do is I like to go to drawing tools. I go to draw text. I draw a little box. I take off all the lines because you don't need the extra lines Then go to text. The text is going to be region map. I prefer this font, but that's a personal preference. And I'm going to make this one just a hundred. Um, just because I know that it looks good. I played around with it. There we go. And we're just going to put it kind of right in the center of that box. Now, definitely looks like it's something you can click on, right? I also will do that with a city map. I don't have the city map done, so that will go down here. But in the meantime, we can still write that in. The other reason I'm writing it in now is so that I can copy and paste this later. <laughs> I did originally have this set up to go straight to an image. I decided I kind of wanted to be able to track in case they decide to go elsewhere. So I did make a region map scene where I've included the hexes and that kind of stuff. I'm hoping the scale isn't too big. Regardless, to set something up like this yourself, you're gonna go to the scene button at the top right. You're gonna click create scene, name it whatever you want. I'll just name it map for now. Hit create scene. Next, you're gonna edit some of the settings. So in particular, you don't want it to be GM only. You want all players to be able to access the map. So you'll do that. Your background image, you're gonna find your map. We're gonna change the grid to a hex grid. You could do rows, columns. I like rows. We're gonna adjust all this other stuff later. 
Uh, one thing is the padding percentage. Turn that all the way off, unless you want the padding, because you could use this room on the side for notes or clicking back, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna lock it to the bounding box. Again, that padding, we're locking it to that scale. And then we're gonna go ahead and save. It's gonna create a new one. I'm gonna go to it instead. In general, for hex grids, most people use six miles per hex. Increase it in increments of six. I know I want Asgard's Point and Luma City to be about three days apart. An adventurer can travel on foot about 32 miles. <laughs> one hex to be about 24 miles. I think this is wrong. Yeah, one hex to be 24 miles. So that would make it about two days journey. You're gonna need to edit this. So now that you have this up, we can do several things. I'm gonna change the background color. You could match anything. I'm actually gonna see what it looks like if I match the dark line and see if I like that better. Now to play with the grid size. So you can click this and this will bring up the grid configuration tool. You're gonna need to, it tells you exactly how to do everything. You can change the background image, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to make it blurry. Or you can change the grid size themselves. It says you use your alt plus the mouse pad and then you can see the hexes get bigger or smaller. So we want it to be about two hexes away. Because uh, 24 times two is 48. So that'll take a day and a half. We actually probably want it to be three away. Actually, you're gonna probably need to adjust just the background image itself so you can move this around so you can get the hexes kind of where you want it to be. This is close enough. But the other thing is I don't like the grid being as bright. So I always change the grid color. I am going to change it to this color. And we're just gonna reduce the grid opacity so it's like barely there and there you go you've got your grid the other thing I did was I added some text just for scale purposes you can do that on your own time other thing is you want to make sure there's no to token vision or fog exploration unless you want that to happen I don't um, and then global illumination is on the other thing we're gonna do is add a token so we'll hit create a new actor type is actually going to be a group. Put it in that folder. We're just going to do test party just for the, oop, just for the sake of this video, we're going to hit create. So you can set an image. So I have tokenizer. That's what brings up this um, beautiful thing. I highly recommend it. It makes circular tokens really easy. I'm going to hit modify and I'm going to use an image from the Foundry server. If you go to core data, go to icons, and then go down to pings, you get this little arrow icon. You can download your own, make your own. I'm just gonna go with this. I'm gonna delete that background guy. Then we're going to copy it using this one. So it comes over here, delete all of these. The other thing you could do with tokenizer is you can add a layer of color that kind of masks the image and changes its color. That's what this little eyedropper tool is for. So I went ahead and click that. For some reason it pops way up here in the top left corner, um, but whatever, you could change it. I'll just do red for instance. I don't normally do red or green because my husband is red green colorblind, which is very common. So if you are doing something like that, make sure your players aren't red green color confused is actually what they call it. No, actually I'll use like purple. Why not? Click here again. I don't know why, but now you can see that kind of changed everything to purple. I'm gonna hit apply. For members, um, you're gonna want to, oh, I guess I didn't duplicate it. We can do that too. So then we click this button here. It'll use the token image instead. Then for members, you can actually click and drag your players onto this. He doesn't have a name yet and that's confusing. It'll do all sorts of things like add the party um, cum cumulative HP, their items, whatever, all together. Um, but then you can just drag and drop it and there he is. They can move it around. The only other thing you wanna make sure that you configure the ownership and that it is owner for everybody. Then they can move it around. All right, so got your map in here. 
Next, let's make some little character photos. So I drew these little frames. That's where I'm gonna put the people's images. So back to the tile controls, same deal. Make sure you're on the cube, draw it. For this, we have images. So I actually have, I have images from my players. So for this one, I had to elongate it a little bit, edit it so it didn't look like her face was squished, but select the character image and put it in this Tyler image, tile image or video section. Then you're gonna go to triggers, same deal, everything good. You're gonna change this to click, allow, 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 goodbye, and then your actions instead are going to be open. No, yes. Open an actor sheet. For this part, you see this changes. It says select entity. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the actor section where you created all of your different characters and you're going to hit this little targeting looking thing. It says select an entity. You're gonna click that all this will like minimize and then you're gonna go to that person. This was temper, so we're gonna click on the name and it'll auto fill it. You want to show to the triggering player only and then hit save, create tile, and it's gonna put her in here. Now she's still a little squishy. It's just not quite perfect, but there we go. So now you can click on this and it goes to temper. We could add her name here, I guess, if we wanted. No point. You do that for all your other players. The next two things, pretty easy. So the reason we want the player inventory one is because I want them to be able to see all of the party stuff, like the party funds, etc., in one place. Um, whether or not they use this is up to them. I don't care but I thought it might also be a good way for me to keep track of things like keys they have or whatever. Go to your tile, create tile, place it here. Again, transparent version here. Select, on click, yes, 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 no. Then your action for this is pretty cool. So the, um, Party inventory one has their own little trigger you can use, which is pretty sweet. So you're gonna just hit open party inventory down here for the triggering player, update, create tile, and literally that's it. Now, the other thing I do is I will copy this guy, Oop. click on him, copy, paste. I'm gonna move it over here, change what it says to inventory, party inventory, party funds, whatever. But now it also looks clickable, right? Um, they have nothing, but this is what party inventory looks like. You can track all of your um, money, your items, etc. Now the slightly hard one, but still pretty easy. <laughs> You're gonna to need to make a macro, which is the cool thing about Monk's tiles. You can make macro macros to like move things around on the map, like, can do some pretty awesome stuff with it. So down here, we're gonna hit browse macro directory. That's gonna pop up a new directory with different macros. I only have the stuff that comes with MIDI QOL and the show calendar macro. Here's the macro. You're just gonna need to like copy this. I don't know anything about macros. I know the bare minimum. So I stole this from someone. You can test it by hitting execute and you'll it should pop up your calendar, right? Should. Um, gonna save it, then it'll just be down here in this folder. You can keep your directory open because you're gonna need it. Go back, make your calendar tile. Again, transparent. Triggers. Click, yes, 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 no. Actions, add. Here, for the action, you're gonna click Run Macro. Again, you get this little targety do flicky that you're gonna use to select Show Calendar on your macros directory. It'll populate and then run as Triggering Player. And then you hit Update. 
and then you create the tile. Bam, go back to drawing tools, copy, paste, move it here. Calendar, that's it. So now you can click this and your calendar comes up. The other thing you can do is you can open journal entries. You can do all sorts of stuff. I'm not gonna run through all of it, but I had books up here. So again, same deal, transparent. Click, yes, 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 no. Actions, then add. So have fun with this. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. You can make it easier for your players to create notes. You can make it easy to roll a table or you know make it easier for you to change the lighting like you could use this in so many different ways the biggest thing i use this for is to teleport people to different maps <laughs> so that's always good but yeah so for this section i use it to open a journal um but you can set it to do whatever you want so that's all like the more functional stuff now let's make it pretty because why would we not all right, so I got a lantern up here. I'm going to add some lighting. It's like a super simple thing you can do, but it kind of like adds to the ambiance, right? We're gonna make it pretty big. Oops. Move it there, all right. Now change the color to something warmer. Nice warm glow, it's a little bit too crazy but that's okay we'll just decrease the intensity just a bit something in there now our light animation we're going to do a flickering light so it kind of feels like a fire i'm actually going to increase the intensity though just because the darkness of my background and all that makes it not seem like it's doing much and then your Advanced options are, these should all be fine, but you want it to be constrained by walls in case you wanted to do things like outline stuff on here. Um, but everything else should be good. So we're gonna upload that. Now we're gonna draw another one. So I wanted to make some of these artifacts on here glow. This is also why I wanted to draw my own. So for this little guy, I want him to kind of glow blue. So I'm actually gonna pick the color right off of this guy. Maybe make it just a little bit brighter. Okay. Now the light animation, I want it to pulse. I'm gonna make it kind of more intense. I also think it's not intense enough color wise. All right, perfect. And I always like click back to token controls to see what it looks like. Now for this guy down here, I was thinking I would do something kind of cool. All right, so to do this, we're going to wall this off. You'll see what we're doing. We're just gonna use basic walls. Um, if you hover, it'll tell you how to do this, but just click and drag. Holding control will let you put multiple points down at a time. It's really rough. Make sure you close it off. <laughs> You're gonna put your light source in here. Change the color. I want it to be like this blue green. Okay, look, now it looks like it's glowing, right? But let's make it cooler. We're gonna make it have like an energy field. And now it kind of looks like it's been contained inside of this thing. Da 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 da. It just adds a little flair. You could do so many other things if you wanted. Editor Kylie and Flinty here. <laughs> I realized that I could add sounds. So if you're looking at this, now I have a sound that plays when you click on it. So if I click on region map, it plays a little click sound, kind of gives you that acknowledgement that you've clicked on something. For the lore, I have a different sound. And then party inventory. And then calendar. It's really easy to do this as well. It's the same as everything else. Since these are already created, you can double click on it and it'll just open up the editor. 
Um, you can see I'm already in the triggers because that's where I was last, but you're gonna go to the triggers tab, then the actions, and then you're gonna hit add. And you can see you're just gonna look for play sound. I actually have it set up as for triggering player. But when you hit the like, update, it says for everyone. So I think that's probably just a bug. I uh, actually tested it. I uh, logged in on my cell phone, which was really hard to navigate <laughs> and clicked on stuff and only my cell phone was making the noise. So it does work even if it says for everyone, <laughs> but I'm gonna hit update tile. Okay, bye-bye Flinty. That's good. I can now feel my arm. If I come up with more things to add to my dashboard, maybe I'll update this later. This is for version 11. Cannot guarantee that this will work for every version and any future versions that come out. Um, but let me know what you guys have done for landing pages as well. I'm always looking for new ideas, so um, throw them at me. I would love to know what you guys put and what your players actually use on a landing page like this. And until next time, bye-bye.